All right, here is the 10th video in my How to Play Blue Water Navy video series and um, finished up as much as I could with the Kirovs and Carriers scenario. So I've loaded up a scenario called uh, Attack on the Kola Peninsula or Strike the Kola or something like that, where, the, uh, where NATO is sending a lot of carriers to try to destroy or damage at least the Soviet bases on the Kola Peninsula. Um, <clears throat> so... You got a lot of ships in this one as NATO, so I, I have them aligned in two task forces here. Um, if you we were playing the game, you probably wouldn't actually sail right into the Barents Sea. You would probably park in the Norwegian Sea and launch your strike. But um, this is the attack that's happening. And uh, the, the carrier air groups, they have six anti-ship missiles with the blue background there. In a previous video, I had mistakenly said that that six stood for six anti-ship missiles or six bomb dice. That is not correct. For a missile to attack a, for a NATO missile to attack a land facility, it has to have a green background. These have blue. Uh, over here, the battleship uh, New Jersey or Iowa, they've got, uh, they've got one missile point with a green background. Uh, that's a TLAM, a Tomahawk land attack missile, and that can attack um, ground ground facilities, right? Any green background NATO missile can do that. There are some subs that have them also. Uh, but the the NATO strike aircraft cannot, and so they have to make a bomb run. When a bomb run happens, every step of strike aircraft that is involved in the bomb run contributes one die. So if, the, if these four strike aircraft make it to the target and drop their bombs without any damage, they'll have a total of eight bomb dice to dedicate to this attack which is a pretty devastating attack. Um, so the first thing that's going to happen is the uh, Soviets are going to try to intercept this combat. And they've got five fighters down here. The number of cap fighters that are allowed to defend the base is equal to the number of enemy strike aircraft or the number of enemy fighter aircraft, whichever is greater. In this case, both are four. So the Soviets pick four fighters. They have a one MiG-20 or MiG-31 Foxhound, which has four dice and plus two. That's their best fighter, so they will pick that. They have a MiG-25 Foxbat, and they have a bunch of MiG-23 Floggers. And for air-to-air -air combat purposes, um, they roll the same number of dice, three plus one, but the Foxbat has slightly better defense. So the Soviets are going to have these four fighters here fly out to meet the attack. And uh, you do it just like fighter versus fighter combat. And I'm going to just go over to the rules here and show you what happens in fighter versus escorted airstrike here. It will tell you you resolve it exactly as fighter versus fighter combat. It tells you about the number of units. Um, if all escorting fighters are destroyed, hits can then be applied to strike aircraft. But there are some exceptions to that. A... A natural nine that's rolled can be applied directly to a strike aircraft if uh, it's a bombing run. And that is, this is a bombing run. So, um, so that, that can happen, right? And also a natural 10 uh, can be applied to the strike aircraft before the bomb run is made, okay? So we're going to start with some air-to-air -air combat here. Uh, the Soviets get to roll nine dice at plus one and four dice at plus two. So we'll start with the nine dice at plus one. And I'm going to go ahead and indicate what I'm doing here. So there's three, six, nine dice at plus one. And now these dice are plus two. And so there are four of them. And so we have uh, we have two hits that can be applied to the strike aircraft, but remember uh, any hit by cap can be saved, and the the modifier the save number for um, the the target number when you're saving against uh, combat air patrol flying from a land facility is six plus. So. Um, so the NATO is going to get to save, and the NATO is also going to get to roll their fighter dice here, which doesn't have too much to do with our purposes here. If the give was an ongoing game, it would matter how many hits the Tomcats got against the Soviets, but we're going to skip that, and we're going to just apply hits. So the, um, 
the uh, the defense that you need, that the Russians need to hit is nine, and so we need to see with modification how many nines they got. And their first group of fighters only has the one natural nine. And when you get down to the fox bat, this has a modified nine and a natural ten. So that is uh, three hits, and uh, NATO gets to save them. So the Soviets will. Uh, will allocate the two, the natural 10 and the natural 9 to strike aircraft if they can. And so uh, so NATO is now rolling its three dice, needing six plus. And so they NATO saved two of those hits. And so when you, what, when you save hits, if you're playing this game face to face, you're rolling the dice and you're leaving the dice out on the table. And after all the dice are rolled, you resolve what's what. So each save that NATO makes takes one dice of NATO's choice off the table. And so what NATO is able to do here is use the, um, use the three saves that they had, or I'm sorry, use the, uh, the two, I should have indicated in the log there. They're able to use their two saves to remove the natural nine and the natural 10. So the only remaining hit is a, is going to be a hit on a fighter, which, uh, NATO's going to take with that fighter there. And the next thing that happens when a bomb run occurs is uh, you see if they have any surface-to-air missile defenses. And the Russians do have this SAM unit here. And um, they're gonna, that SAM unit is going to roll three dice. And so if you look at the player aid attacking land targets air unit bombing land targets, it takes you through this. Um, so there's a couple things to know about bombing targets. The NATO, the bombing player can allocate a certain number of dice to uh, SAM suppression, CAD or SEED, I think they pronounce it. And um, for U.S. carrier air groups, um, if you allocate two carrier air groups to suppression, you get an extra die for SAM suppression. And there's a table that you roll for that. And I think I can find that for you over here in the rules. Uh, let me just scroll down here. Hmm. Uh, no, they don't. Yeah, they're, they're going to have it here. Sorry for all the scrolling. I should have been prepared. But I will find it. I will find it. Um, okay. Uh, this, we're looking at bombing runs here. Okay. So here's what happens for your SAM suppression dice. So... Um, the NATO player here has a total, let's bring the SAM unit up, the NATO player here has a total of eight bomb dice. If it allocates the dice from two of the carrier air groups, then it can roll five dice to try to suppress the surface-to-air missiles bef before they get to fire. Um, and um, so that's what uh, that's what they're going to do. They're going to have five dice trying to suppress the uh, the surface to air missiles. So there's three, four, five, and if you look at the table here, it says uh, any roll of one to two is a miss, any roll of three to five is minus one SAM for this attack, any roll of six to eight is minus one SAM and you place a hit, and a nine or ten you place two hits. So that would affect future combats. So we have uh, one miss and <clears throat> uh, one, two hits that would if, that would involve uh, both losing the dice and damaging the unit, and then we have another two dice lost and two units damaged. So the CAD suppression um, effectively, uh, the, you can, if you right-click that unit, you don't get to add a hit. Um, so let me find the hit counter. Boom, boom. Uh, I think it's in here, yeah. So uh, what's happening over here is uh, this unit is uh, effectively is destroyed is what it is. Um, suffered, I think, five hits, right? So so it's not it's not functional anymore. So NATO has four bomb dice remaining. And um, if the SAM had survived, they would roll however many SAM points they had. And on every six plus, they would have ignored a bomb die and any roll that they came up equal to or greater than the strike unit's defense, they would have killed a unit. They would have killed a strike unit. So 
let's say that the that the SAM units were able to still roll their three dice, and there they have three, eight, ten. So that ten would have the eight would have taken away one bombing dice, and the ten would have taken away another bombing dice and damaged one of the strike aircraft. And um, so now NATO is going to roll their bomb run, and they have four bomb dice, right? They have two full strength strike units making a bombing run. And um, and so you roll your bomb dice. And so they, NATO has four, so they're going to roll their four. And that's not a good roll for NATO. We're going to come over here, and uh, this, is the, this is the bombing results table. A one to three is a miss. A four to eight is a hit plus one collateral. And a nine to ten is two hits plus two collateral. And um, so the, those were misses. The three was also a miss, right? Yeah, one to three was a miss. So this bomb run uh, scored only a single hit. And so you would you would place this hit marker on the facility. Uh, you would uh, drop it down to one. And <clears throat> then this facility would now be lightly damaged. And then the air units would return to base. Spent. Oh, and there's also a kill. Uh, there, there would be a kill and um, so um, the way that the allocating those kills works is that the even number kills are allocated by the defender, odd by the attacker. One is an odd number. So NATO would pick a unit to destroy, and it would probably pick one of these backfires over here, um, or, uh, or it might pick the Bear D, which uh, is pretty potent uh, search aircraft and can also... Um, do some damage so uh yeah so or it's pretty potent striker it's got a lot of range right but they would probably shoot down one of kill one of these backfires on the ground and then that would happen like that so that's how bombing works right and I, again i like the way this I, I just like the way he has thought about representing this kind of combat here so you know, the airstrike comes in, it's escorted, the combat air patrol goes out, the fighters, the combat air patrol fighters do their best to get to the strike aircraft. The fighters that are that are skillful enough or lucky enough, aka roll high enough dice, manage to get through and tag some of the strike aircraft. Um, those that aren't might do some damage to the fighters, but um, if the scut if the pilots on the other side are skillful enough they can evade uh, aka make a saving throw right and once all that scramble has happened then the strike aircraft goes in to for a bombing run their surface to air missiles fire they the surface to air missiles might shoot down some bombers or they might just scare off some bombers or make bombers evade so that the bomb that they drop misses um the, some of the air units might be allocated to try to stop the SAMs from happening. They're, they're also simulating to some extent some EA-6 prowlers back there doing electronic warfare, right? They're not counters in the game, but that's sort of part of the carrier air group is that are those units. And, uh, and then uh, whatever many bombs get through, maybe they damage a, a hangar or crater a runway. And maybe they, maybe they also take out, uh, you know, a, a revetment of aircraft or something like that. And then everybody flies back. So that's a bombing run right there. That's pretty much all I've got to say about that. Um, and so that's the last uh, sort of instructional piece I have. I'm going to do another video about my about capital ships i want to make sure i'm clear on capital ships and i'm also going to talk some about how the campaign game works um but for now that's this is that's good for now so uh, i hope i got all that right about the bombing and um yeah all right talk to you later